I'm doing video games. So it's not exactly a fandom. I'm not a fan of video games. I actually had to learn a lot about video games in the process of making this. Grand Theft Auto is a very poor, poor example because, like I said before, uh, it's very subjective to say that it's misogynistic. Because I can say as, as much as anybody else that it has violence against men in the video games. Because what are you killing in video games? Mostly men. Who are the people you're killing mostly in video games? Mostly men. I would say 95%, if not more, of the enemies that you kill in video games are men. Are men. Anita, they're men. And the thing about it is that GTA is such a poor example because it basically shows me, and I'll, I'll even use, because I, no, th I saw Thunderbolt's video on it, and he made a very good analogy where you see a person like Sarah Palin that went for, pre that went for a VP back in uh, 2000, yeah, 2008 with, you know, of course, President Obama's election. Um, and you see her, Sarah Palin, every time she would have interviews, and people are saying, oh, what sources did you get them from? Oh, well, I got them from um, a variety of sources. Okay, name me one. Oh, well, I got them from, you know, them all, all of them. All of them. Name me on something specific. Oh, you know, you know, it's like, Sarah Palin, I'm going to call it out. She's an idiot. <laughs> Point blank. Not, you know, no, of course, if all your feminists that are watching, no, it's not because she's a woman. It's because she's point blank an idiot. It's just because she doesn't back up her claims. She, just, she claims so many stuff, but she doesn't have anything to back it up. And to be honest, she's probably pulling most of the stuff out of her butt. Let's be honest here. I mean, if you can't back, if you can't back up a civil, civil plane, why should I be able to trust you or trust what you have to say? My point being to Anita, where she can't even name three video games that rightfully so back up her main point of mistreatment of women in video games. And she has very, very weak points. I've seen a lot of the videos. She has very weak points. A lot of the games, I know she hasn't played it in full. She just picks it from a bag, cherry picks it, and automatically deems it as misogynistic. But if you play those video games, which a lot of them I have played, um, are not mis misogynistic or or a lot of them, they have a specific reason for why those things happen. My point being, one time, uh, and then I'll get into the next topic, where she used Bioshock as one of her examples. One of my favorite video games of all time. And uh, one of the things I didn't like was she says that there was a scene where you see Andrew Ryan. Um, and this is a scene where Jack is inside, uh, I believe, uh, I forgot which area he was in. But it was the part where, where he sees Andrew Ryan, which is, I don't want to spoil it for you guys, but let's just say Andrew Ryan, who is very key to the story. Um, he goes into a room where there's a prostitute. And um, he see, he see, is seen killing the prostitute. And she always say, oh, see, right there, M mistreatment of women in video games. You know, that shouldn't happen. Even though, I'll give you guys to download the specific reason why it happened. There was a scandal that was going on between uh, Andrew Ryan and Fontaine where uh, I believe that particular woman, I forgot her name, but I know she's key to the story, where they were having a relationship together for a specific reason. I don't want to spoil it for you guys. But then she, but then she was doing something where she was giving information, kind of like, kind of like being found like in treason in a sense, where she was uh, doing something where she was, she was um, maliciously trying uh, to to uh, give information to Fontaine for some for some reason. I haven't played the game in so long, but I know that uh, she was in the wrong and she was doing something. Now, was it right necessarily right for him to kill to kill her? No, that's not that's not besides the point. The point being is is that there was a specific reason why it happened. It wasn't because she's a woman. It was because it's like for anything like somebody somebody committing treason. In, uh, in, in in the U.S. or something like that, you know, it's not because they're woman, or it's because it can be anybody, it can be a male, a female, or whatever. But getting back to not to digress too much, but getting back to the main point, those are just an example of one of the things that I see where a person like this cherry picks or just picks something out of the bag, automatically says, "Oh, it's misogynistic, just misogynistic." And then when you actually look at, into the video game, they're not even in the slightest. For instance, I never she used another example with a game called Hitman. We see in the game, oh, Hitman, you know, you just have, you know, you know, you just drag, you know, women's bodies around like a body bag. I can do the same thing to men. In fact, you actually get degraded points or it's actually, it's actually um, played against you to kill women. They actually have a system in there where it's not good for you to kill women. Oh, but because it's in place there, automatically it's misogynistic. Even though the same thing happens to men in the video games, very the same. In fact, the people you're supposed to kill are the men. Or the men in need of the men. So why is it that because of a certain uh, of a certain function in the video game that you already had to point out that it's misogynistic and that the main point of the game is for you to kill or to or or for you to condemn women, which is not true at all. Because like you said, like like I said before, if you play these video games, you actually delve into them, you find out a lot of that stuff isn't true. It's just it's not true. Now to get further on into the point, so I can get to the overall arc at the end. 
Um, basically, like I said before, avoiding the questions. Now, of course, we have we have her go on to say she a lot of you know she says oh a lot of women are harassed. Um, and, but it comes to uh, in in this particular realm, and the way I say it is that I've seen so many male YouTubers, so many male YouTubers, um, that that have been you know attacked on a regular basis, death threats, all that stuff. And do you see them putting it on Twitter? Do you see them putting it online? Oh, look, you know, see, this is why we need to support me. No, they go to the FBI. They go to the investigation. They do it. They, they have them investigate and get the problem solved. They don't act like a damsel. Point being, for instance, let me give you another example. You know, again, I'll, give, I'll use Thunderfoot as an example. He's been attacked numerous times, numerous times. And does he go on Twitter and blurt out to the world? No, he goes to the FBI. He goes to the internet police and he files a complaint and files a, a sense to, to go after and prosecute the person that is that is harassing him. He doesn't have time to act like a damsel. He takes actually takes care of the situation, but not because he's a male, but because he has common sense. Now, let me use another point. Phil Fish, which was a huge part of this whole Gamergate scandal that she didn't even address. He was doxxed. You think that's bad? He was doxxed. His information was leaked out where anybody, you know, like, for instance, let me explain what doxing is. Doxing is basically where they, they, they dissimulate information, very, very vital in personal information about somebody so they can come to your house, they can send police, police false claims to your house saying, oh, he has, you know, merit possession of drugs or he's trying to, to bomb um, a, a mall or something like that and have him come to the house and have a... Um, have a whole misunderstanding. And the way I see it is that with Phil Fish, that's one of the reasons why he left gaming. Is because he was tired of all of this. He was tired of all the uh of all this and you know, this this crazy crap, everybody going one way, going this way because he supported Zoe Quinn. Now, I don't necessarily agree with him for supporting Zoe Quinn, but at the same time that doesn't merit him getting doxxed. But not once did he need to ever address that issue. Moving on. Then you see where women are, actually, let me, let me not get ahead of myself. Then she goes on to make a point that women are not included in video games. That is a, a boys-only club. Here's what I think about that, Anita. Statistically speaking, who plays video games more, male or female? Obviously, the answer is male because, for one, we just it just gravitates to us more. Because, like I said, what are we males like to do? We're visual. We're visual people. We're visual human beings. We like to see things. We're visual. We like to see things and we like to interact. That's how we're hardwired. So most likely by genetics, by just you just who we are, obviously a man's gonna gravitate towards video games more than women. And women are gonna gravitate more towards, you know, reading and, and maybe, you know, maybe other venues and stuff like that that gravitate more towards woman a woman's liking. That more to something that they like and more to something that that you know, that they gravitate to. You're not necessarily saying that women can't be in video games because, like I said, we have a wide influx of video, of video, of female video gamers. I think that's wonderful. Come on in. Join the party. There's plenty of room. We love women. Women are awesome, newsflash, Anita. And here's another point. How is it a boys only club? And that's one of the things I don't like is that one of the key points they made was they tried to make a kind of a civil rights issue. I remember actually Culper was, was the one that actually said it where we can have a separate but equal gaming community. And I say uh, that that's actually, I take that as actually a big F you to this whole civil rights movement. And I'm going to address that real quick in, right here and now because the civil rights movement was a very serious issue when it came to down to an actual an actual injustice between African Americans within society, based uh, ba uh, based on based on their ethnic hue and their and their and who they are as a people, more or less than being falsified claims and fallacy claims, and something that has to do with video games, more than actual real hard pressed issues like you see with actual misogyny all around the world, real issues. So, but that my my point being is that. Don't compare both of them, because there, because this right here, this whole little little game you have here, Anita, it doesn't even touch the surface on what my people have to suffer through during that period in time. Because my point being, once again, is the is this: you see a lot of people trying to say, "Oh, well, you know, it's like you know, this social injustice. Where is the social injustice? 
Where do you see where it says there's a sign saying only men can play video games? We do you go in go into GameStop. Go into GameStop. And I want to give you an example. Go into GameStop. Do you see where it says the game says, oh, what, oh, oh, men only. Oh, oh, this game, this game right here. No, men only. Do you do you see labels like that? Is there um, a woman section in, in, in GameStop? Is there a sign right right over overhead that says, oh, oh, males only. Oh, you're not allowed. Do you see that? No, you don't. But you do see back in the day, colored, regular, you know, white people and colored. That's a real issue that happened back. And that was a very dark time in our history. But that's something that actually did, and it was tangible, and actually does happen, and actually did happen. So don't compare both of them, because it doesn't even touch the surface. Again, makes the claim that it's a boys-only club, but then you see that that's not the case. It's just point being that more men gravitate more towards video games than women do. It's just a fact. It's just what you like. The same way, you know, there's, I can give an analogy with comic books. More males like read comic books than women do, but women read more novels than men do because women like the feeling. They like to, they like to, you know, to see, you know, the, the deep, the deep, you know, aspects of the story arc while men like to see the visual, like we like to see the visual aspects of it. It's a positive thing because that's just how it is, but that doesn't mean somebody can cross over into read a novel or that doesn't mean a woman can't read a comic book. The same way it doesn't mean a woman can't play a video game. Because like I said again, there's a wide variety and a bit ever-growing community of female gamers. I think that is a wonderful thing. Moving on. Of course, she makes the claim that there is a, a lack of diversity of women in video games. <laughs> this is going to be my best, my best segment here because I haven't actually looked online of... Female heroines that I love in video games. A lot of video games that have female heroines. And right off the bat, the first link that I saw, 50 beautiful you know, representations of heroin women in video games. And guess what, Anita? They're all clothed. Most of them are clothed. Newsflash, most, most of them have their full clothes on. For point being an example, Tomb Raider, wonderful game, Laura Croft, great heroine character. Everybody, a wide variety, a wide, wide audience. People love that game ever since the '90s. Metroid, Samus Aran, of course, a big, a big person in this, in, in the, uh, in, of course, in the heroin aspects of video gaming. Then you have Bayonetta. You have the girl, you have the girl from Blood Rain. You have Elizabeth from Bioshock. She had her own solo game that tied in very heavily, very heavily to the Bioshock story arc storyline. If you played Bioshock Burial at Sea Part Two, then you have, of course, Madison Page, Madison Page from. Um, from um, Heavy Rain. Then you have uh, Alex Vance from, of course, from, from Half-Life. Then you have Jill Valentine from Resident Evil. You have Shell from Portal. You have, jo you have Joanne Dark from Perfect Dark, one of my favorite all-time FPS games of, of, of ever. Then you have, of course, uh, what else do we have? You have Jade from Beyond and Good and Evil. We have Commander Shepard, the female version, in a wide variety of ethnicities. And I'll get to ethnicity in a minute. And of course, we have uh, Faith from from Mirror's Edge, and like I said, there's so many more. That's only a handful of of great heroines in video games that I need. It doesn't seem to acknowledge. Doesn't seem to acknowledge them at all. I don't see one of you saying, "Oh, but I don't see I don't see one of format of her video." Where she says, "Yes, there are some damsels in distress that I don't like, but in addition to that, we have so and so and so and so that are a good uplifting representation of women in video games." Not once has I ever, ever heard her say that. Not once have I ever heard her mention these great women that are represent, represented in video games. Not one time. And I can't be wrong. And Anita, if you're watching this video, please correct me. Like I said, I would love to discuss this. I would love to, to, to discuss these issues and really get a chance to see your actual you know views on what, how you feel about these specific, particular issues. Uh, moving on. Now, one thing I would like to give a challenge to Anita is this. Name me three video games that represent African Americans in a light that is heroic, intelligent, and eth and let's say and, and say ethically correct. Name me name, name me three. Name, actually, no, no, actually. Excuse me. In the comments below, uh, just for just for example reference. Uh, I want you guys to name me three African-American representations of video games as main characters 
that are, again, heroic and everything else above. Name me three. Okay, so moving on. Actually, and, and, you know, like I said before, 50 Cent, Bulletproof, games like that, which are, you know, against the representation of African Americans in video games, and GTA San Andreas, they don't count. They simply do not count. And my point being is this. You're claiming all these things about women, yet, actually, I can argue that there is little to none rep good representations of African American in video games, for that matter. Even, even uh, especially a little more to like Latino or other ethnicities in video games. Granted, you know, Faith is, is actually from Asian descent. And again, a female in a video game, but uh, and it's from Mirror's Edge. Like I said, there is a, a, a very limited, limited number of African-American leads in video games that doesn't have to do with crime, drugs, or shooting up places or stuff like that. I can easily argue that. But a lot of people like to overlook this because they like to, a lot of feminists, they like to, to put themselves in the forefront and they don't like to actually to see the truth on the matter and what's really going on and a lot of these things that do happen in these particular venues that, a lot, that I feel strongly needs to be addressed. 